Hey guys, um, today I want to test something out with this Kmos Turbo interface I have here. I have uh, two versions of that, so I have the one with only the f one throughput port and I have the one with three throughput ports. Um, they're available in the webshop. Uh, but it seems that these Kmos Turbo interfaces have problems with uh, working on a um, toast rack. And I have a toast rack here, let me show you. Uh, it boots up fine without anything connected. But as soon as I connect a Camos Turbo to it, um, it has problems with booting. So let's put it up now. Sometimes it works, and as you can see, it does, doesn't work at this moment. Sometimes it does, like now. And I had a, had a gut, gut feeling uh, what it could be, and I was just testing it out, and I think I found it. So I'm doing a couple of more tests, because I want to, to show you. So now it doesn't boot. So let's say it boots up 50% uh, of the time, but we have another one here, the Excel version, the one with all the uh, extra ed edge connectors. I'm connecting that now, and now I'm testing the same, and as far as I know it doesn't boot up at all. And that is interesting, because this Camos Turbo Excel interface works fine on any other machine, like a Plus 2 for example, I have a Plus 2 board here. I'm not going to connect it because I tested this already. And also uh, 48K machines, oops, uh, so 48K, no problem at all. And also Harlequin boards, and I have several Harlequin boards, but believe me, there's one inside this, uh, this case here. So I tested it all, and that works without any problem. It only fails on a toast rig. And I tested um, 10 toast rig boards today, over 10, I think, 11 or 12 maybe. With the Camos uh, Turbo interface, so the, the version with only the one edge, uh, throughput edge and the version, the Excel version with three put, throughput edge connectors, um, and on all toast tracks I got the same problem. Um, so what I did, I picked one toast track today and I was swapping CPUs. So I had here the original CPUs, this is a Zilog uh, Z84 uh, 00 APS, and I got a couple of them. Uh, th these are in the most of the toast tracks, at least the toast tracks I have here. Um, also, I tested a SGS here, and I tested a NEC Animal CPU, and those are the most reliable CPUs, set data CPUs that exist, and the most reliable for a toast track. So it's good to, um, if you want the best compatibility, to have a, a NEC uh, DA78, sorry, D780C slash slash one uh, CPU in a toast track. But still, we have problems with the KMOS Turbo. Uh, so I was um, thinking, what could be the cause of this signal integrity issue? What could it be? And the issue, the problem is that there, there, the only, the only main difference between a toast rack and a plus two is that the I will show you the plus two um, developed by Amstrad um, has about the same initial clock circuit here. So the, the uh, um, crystal, the uh, HU04, uh, which I think is an S04 uh, on a toast track, but anyway that doesn't matter too much. Because the plus 2 has a buffer chip in between, between the clock signal coming from the uh, ULA, chip, ULA chip to going to the Z80 CPU. And that makes the clock signal a lot more stable. But on the toast track, that's not done. They didn't add a buffer, they added just a sing simple um, transistor. Uh, let me show you, I think it's this one, tier 3. Um, so the same, uh, uh, there's, there's a similar, sorry, it's not the same, not the same, but it's a similar clock circuit here, creating 17, 17 megahertz going into the ULA chip. And then the clock signal coming out of the ULA chip is, uh, you can call it buffered, and sent to the Z80 CPU. And the buffering done by this transistor is enough for the Z80 CPU, but everyone knows that the clock signal on the edge connector of the toast rack is very unreliable and weak and only peaks at, what is it, 2 volts or something. Um, so, for example, many different MC interfaces coped with uh, problems with the toast rack, so I had a, a, a specific toast rack setting for my different MCs uh, that changed the clock signal a bit. It wasn't very reliable, so nowadays uh, there is a separate clock on the DFMC Pro series which solves that. Um, but uh, the clock signal isn't isn't very powerful. 
But you can ask, why bother about the clock signal because the KMOS Turbo doesn't use the clock signal. And that's true. But for example, when I, uh, let me just disconnect the keyboard here so I have some more space, my disk isn't that big. Um, so it doesn't boot at all at this moment. But when I connect a diagnostic cartridge, I hope this goes well, <laughs> uh, it does boot a diagnostic cartridge, as you can see. And it does something, but it hangs after a while. Uh, it, it does initial tests and then it, it stops working. And you can see there's something not very reliable. It, so, so far so good, but uh, often, yeah, it, it hangs now. You can see there's something going wrong, the ZED halts, uh, it, it's, it, it hangs, it crashes, something like that. So there is there's some issue here with the toast track and the KMOS Turbo interface and if you don't believe me, I'll we'll show you that it will uh, with one hand it's quite hard, but well, let's put it down then <laughs> because I have a camera on the stand, so why not Let me plug in the diagnostic cartridge so you believe me if I say that with the diagnostic cartridge it runs just fine uh, You can see it count down there, I don't have audio uh, plugged in at the moment, but anyway It will boot up fine, it will run the diagnostic, let me show you it's no problem with only the diagnostic cartridge. So there's something going on here. And I think I have the, 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 the cause, not the solution, but a cause. And I will show you what I think it, that it is. Um, as you can see, it just runs the, the diagnostic without an issue. Let, let's power this down. Let's plug back in the uh, simple KMOS Turbo interface, which also gave the problem 50% uh, uh, of the time. Let's test that again. See, you can see it hangs now. And it does that uh, about 50% of the attempts. So let's get that interface and let's perform a small modification to it. So what we're going to do here, we're going to disconnect the clock signal, although it's not used, and I'm going to explain why I'm doing this. Um, so it's disconnected now, I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but anyway. It's disconnected, so we have a loose pin here, that's a clock signal, it's right next to the ground signals on the on the edge connector. So let's get back and let's see what happens here. Oops, sorry for the bump. <laughs> I hope you're not listening by headphone or something, <laughs> otherwise it may have sounded awful. So we disconnected the clock signal and let's see if it works now. That's one. And that's two. I would count to 10 to do some initial testing uh, to make sure if it works or not. And as you can see, it still works. No problem at all. Now let's connect to the diagnostic on this one here. See if it still runs. Initial tests, it's counting down. Sure why those LEDs are not. Li uh, didn't light up now, don't know why that is. We'll check it out later. Anyway, the diagnostic is running, I think it's I think it's okay. Um, yeah, so it's doing the tests and so it still runs and it's reliable. Uh, I'm, I'm just not sure if the I thought that those should be put on, I'm not sure. I have to check that with another machine, but anyway. Uh, th that's not the point now. Um, but what we can see is when we disconnect the clock signal that isn't used by either of these interfaces, the system is comp is kind of stable. So what I think, what I think is that the KMOS interface, with its pass-through edge connectors, and again this XL has two extra vertical edge connectors here, throughput edge connectors. I think that adding that length of tracks of wire, copper wire, on the board to the clock signal. Uh, will make the clock signal very unreliable and of course we can measure that with the oscilloscope I have one but I'm too lazy at the moment uh, but we we kind of just um, proved that that's true because the, the clock signal isn't used by the KMOS interface but it it works when we disconnect it from the board and everything seems to work just fine then and yeah well um, so what my what I think is that the cheap solution that Sinclair used but with only that transistor here to create a clock signal for the Z80 is so unreliable um, that I think it, it, it should be replaced and then by something uh, maybe another transistor or maybe uh, just the, uh, the LSO4 chip that's present on the plus two board for example um, you can see it's, it's already done uh, uh, checking memory and so so it's booting to 128 menu now 
Anyway, uh, let's get back to the topic. Uh, I think that this solution here really is uh, the, the most worthless solution that's inside of the toast rack. I love the toast rack, but this solution for a clock signal is just uh, a piece of shit. Um, so, uh, I will discuss this issue with Ian uh, Gladwell and uh, George Felisov who designed the developed the KMOS interface. Um, and I want to discuss with them what could be the best solution to improve that clock signal so <laughs> an interface like this won't act as a bad antenna that will mess up the clock signal that goes to the Z80 CPU. So again, the clock signal comes from the ULA chip, goes through this transistor to be some kind of buffered, and then is fed into the Z80 CPU. And if you uh, connect other things to it that act as an antenna, then the Z80 CPU um, can't uh, do anything with that um, and just hangs or just doesn't boot or something like that. Uh, that's what I think we just proved and I think it's kind of new information to the community uh, because um, well you know the, the KMOS interface isn't, isn't sold that much um, and uh, I've tested it for months without any issue on other machines except the toast rack because the combination of, <laughs> believe it or not the combination of toast rack and KMOS isn't that common um, and I just found this problem and I, I really wonder if we can solve it and if we can find a good solution for it. Um, so, you finally see my, I hope my hair is good, <laughs> you can finally see me. Um, I hope we can find a solution for this and uh, when I do then I will um, uh, talk about it of course again. Oh, I look grey, why do I look grey, I don't know. <laughs> We'll talk about it again and we'll post it on Facebook uh, to share this information because we want to make the best of these old machines and we still want to keep using them. And especially uh, because there are so t quite a, quite a, an amount of cool uh, games uh, for mouse these days, um, like Surfervication or something, I have to check it. We'll do a, a review about it game uh, very soon on, on YouTube. Um, so I think people might like this interface but it has to be reliable of course and especially on uh, our most beloved toast rack machines of course so we'll be back with more info as soon as i can so thank you for watching for this video and see you later bye